in this session i'm going to discuss about how to write a geography answer for your gs1 paper and uh, for demonstrating the answer writing i have taken a question from the indian monsoon topic and the previous question from this topic indian monsoon it's like this how far do you agree that the behavior of indian monsoon has been changing due to humanizing landscape now if you break down this question the important parts of the question are like one the behavior of indian monsoon has been changing due to humanizing landscape so these two parts should be there in our answer as well as we have to bring up other uh, aspects of this question also okay now let's see like which all points uh, we can include in your in the into our answers now let's see which are the points you can bring up under each heading so first let's start with the introduction part and the introduction what you can do e here is like you have to come up with the changes or behavioral changes in the pattern of the indian monsoon so i have included here few points you can include there first thing the change in this uh, spatial distribution of indian monsoon i mean like uh, uh, like uh, suppose if you take rajasthan's case like recently like they are having more rainfall occurring over the rajasthan region which is usually having less rainfall okay and some other places will be having prolonged you know uh, dry conditions will be there usually they will be having more rainfall so what happens is that due to this spatial or change in the spatial distribution of rainfall the crop patterns will have to be changed and their indigenous methods has to be changed and you know people they will have to adapt towards this change so one ch behavioral change in the pattern of i mean like the indian monsoon you can say that the spatial distribution has been changing then the second thing on a prolonged time on a continuous basis we are having less rainfall or the amount of the rainfall resulting from the monsoon climate is declining and that itself is a i mean like declining amount of rainfall that itself is a behavioral change in indian monsoon and another thing irregular onset and withdrawal as well as like more monsoon break days i mean like here monsoon break days means after the onset of monsoon which is the starting of monsoon after the onset of monsoon if you are having more i mean like a few days or a weeks which is having uh, we are not having any kind of monsoonal rainfall that period we call it as monsoon break days so all of these things are actually behavioral changes in the indian monsoon so you can in the under, under the introduction part you can you now enter towards your answer through these by explaining any of these two points you can enter into your answer now next let's see the next aspect of the question which is humanizing landscapes Hum landscape actually here means or in geographical perspective landscape means it's related with the climate of a region biography of the region vegetation the land use everything okay so it's not only related with land forms rather than with climate vegetation and anything so humanizing landscape simply means the anthropogenic effect on indian monsoon right so <coughs> here in this question like uh, uh, there is no doubt that anthropogenic effect is there or it is influencing indian monsoon so in order to substantiate our point we have to bring up the other points which are like one climate change due to burning up of more fossil fuels which is resulting in global warming we are having climate change and which is a i mean like an anthropogenic effect right and due to this climate change more intensified and frequent weather events like el nino will be there and if you are having more these kind of events i mean like it will drastically affect the indian monsoon so one point you can interlink here is el nino next you can say like uh, if you are having uh, or due to climate change the thermal difference between the indian ocean and the indian subcontinent it, it is getting reduced i mean like uh, both of the regions the, the thermal difference between them they are getting reduced in this case i mean like the indian monsoon or the the flow of the southeast trade winds they will get reduced or the why the trade winds they are moving towards the indian subcontinent because of this low pressure getting established in the indian subcontinent region and due to climate change their thermal difference between land and ocean will get reduced thereby hindering the indian monsoon right and next deforestation if you are having more forested land it means like they will stop the clouds it will result in more rainfall and uh, by deforestation it is again influencing i mean it is reducing the indian monsoon 
and uh, next thing coding actually this point is particularly in news regarding the western guard and other regions also so what is the logic here i mean like if if our in continent or the indian land regions if they are completely plain in structure okay the indian monsoon the rainfall will be reduced but since we are having more these mountainous regions these mountain regions will they, they will stop the cloud i mean like the monsoon clouds which will result in precipitation so quarrying or illegal mining those kind of activities will reduce the the i mean like indian monsoon and you can bring this point under the heading humanizing landscape next point is over irrigation see we if if you are irrigating land okay during summer time or like do before summer time itself we are irrigating land it means that low pressure cannot get intensified over the land regions see the monsoon monsoon winds are there because of this low pressure getting established over the indian subcontinent it will attract the southeast trade winds from the australia's regions right so if you are over irrigating this land region what happens is that this low pressure cannot as to get established there and it will reduce the monsoon winds which will reduce the monsoon rainfall so over irrigation i mean like it is a uh, uh, due to over irrigation i mean like the monsoon rainfall will it reduce and you can bring up under humanizing landscape next thing particulate matter again it is in current affair you can say air pollution the particulate matter emission uh, from our uh, transportation sector from our energy sector all and construction sectors these all things which will reduce the insulation suppose if you are having more particulate matter in atmosphere it will reflect back the <coughs> light i mean like it will reflect back the sunlight coming from the sun okay and one thing and another thing you can say that with more particulate matter more cloud formations will be there and if you are having more cloud cover the insulation will get obstructed right so particulate matter or you can say aerosols they reduce the indian monsoon especially like uh, in the land regions if you are having more cloud cover due to this particulate matter it will reduce the insulation and the low pressure cannot get intensified over the land regions which will eventually reduce the indian monsoon so under humanizing landscapes you can bring up all these points which influences the indian monsoon but should the answer stop there by just you know mentioning these issues no it shouldn't like if you are bringing up certain issues make sure always you give solutions to the issues you are bringing up here so in this case since you brought up the issues of humanizing landscape you have to bring certain solutions to address this problem of humanizing landscape now let's take a look at the solutions with which we can address the problem of humanizing landscape first of all environmental impact assessment now if you are doing an environmental impact assessment we'll get a great idea about the the environmental impact of these things like coring land i mean like or deforestation or anything which we are doing like if you are doing this environmental impact assessment uh, we can reduce the impact on environment thus reducing the impacts of humanizing landscape then like uh, effective implementation of traffic uh, respective laws and policies norms like uh, air prevention and control act as well as bs emission norms now this is from the perspective of addressing the problem of particulate matter now one thing you have to take care here like uh, if you are bringing up a problem okay always give there the solutions to address that problem so never leave a problem like unsolved so here as we have mentioned the problem of air pollution or you can say particulate matter which is blocking the sunlight i mean uh, we can address that issue using like implementation of respective laws because we are having enough laws the problem is like uh, uh, we have to implement those laws and recently like uh, in order to uh, in order to curb the particulate matter from transportation sector government came up with the bar stage emission norms now implementing those emission norms will curb this menace of particulate matter then making regulatory bodies like in national pollution control board accountable again the same related with the same area the next solution is regarding climate change abiding paris agreement and shifting to low carbon path now we have already signed the paris agreement and uh, if we abide by the paris agreement we will be moving towards low carbon path and thereby we will achieve sustainable development the issue of climate change cannot be solved by just one nation 
but if Paris Agreement comes into being and if it's successful, the the issue, issue of climate change can be solved. Then, like uh, we mentioned the problem of over irrigation, like reducing the low pressure uh, established in the land regions, right? How can we reduce the issue of, or how can we stop this issue of over irrigation? We got, uh, you can either mention certain schemes related with irrigation, in this particular scheme is related with micro irrigation, and if it, if it can be achieved, like the problem of over irrigation, like uh, farmers need not use over irrigation. We can shift to more expensive, but we can shift to more sustainable micro irrigation with schemes, schemes like this. As well as, like, uh, if you are cultivating crops, or I mean, like, if you are cultivating very water intensive crops in the regions where scanty rainfall is only available, like, it, it is not conducive, right? We will have to use irrigation there. Instead of that, what if we could change the crop pattern? I mean, like, uh, instead of cultivating rice and everything in pads, I mean, like, uh, in Punjab and Haryana, what if uh, we can shift those crops towards the eastern region, which is receiving more rainfall? Okay, so with which, again, like we can solve the issue of over-irrigation. So what I mean to say he here is, like, if you're bringing up certain issues, always make sure you're bringing up solutions there. Okay, and next, how will you conclude this answer? Now, in the, in the perspective of geography answers, like, uh, sometimes, like, they won't be asking our perspective. So you need not write, you know, very lengthy conclusion for the GS1 answers from geography. But in this particular question, it's kind of like, uh, you know, they are giving, asking your perspective. So make sure in all those questions where you, the, your perspective is being asked, make sure you give proper conclusion. So regarding this particular question, uh, you can come up with the importance of Indian monsoon. By saying that, you can conclude your answer. Like, uh, ours is an agrarian economy and uh, majority of our population, more than 60 percentage, still depends on agriculture and majority of our land is still rain fed. So that it is important to properly study and predict Indian monsoon so that uh, the irregularities in the monsoon won't affect our economy. Okay. 